top up the water anyway. Because last time I ran, a fit, they did a feed run. Ooh, come on, turn, turn, turn. There we go. We did end up using the last... Uh, we didn't end up using the last of our... Uh, sugar beets. And it does look like... Uh, the top of that sugar beet tank is now... Got drained as we drove through there. Oh, come on. One. Oh. So since we already have sugar beets on this field, I will put those there. Oh, that's hold on. Let's take a chainsaw to it. Uh, that has 558 left in it. Okay, that has 786 in it. That has 500. Okay, we'll take that partially filled one as well. No, let's jump out and do this properly. Press the right button. There we go. Okay, so the I mean the thing with this field is these sheep eat the least amount of food, so we're not overly worried about. Them. Now it'll fall off. That's probably going to drain a bit as well. But we have two hay bales there. That needs to go back on the trailer. Yeah, we've got more sheep in this field because they're baby sheep. They don't eat as much, seriously, as uh, the other fields of sheep that we have, which are fully grown adults. Oh, come on, really? Do not do that. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And gotcha. Okay. Actually, we've got quite a lot of hay on this field. Um, we've also got a bunch of uh, clover silage. I think it's the bottom field that um, I have the most issues with silage because I can't I can't <laughs> afford to leave a partial silage bale on a field because the game will delete it when I leave it. So what I tend to do is I top off that that uh, thing in the top of the field in the top field with silage and then I bring the, the rest of the silage bale down here to do that or to top off that one which is why this field tends to have a little bit more silage on it than um, come on do that thing I'm going to uh, let that drain a bit they're now topped off and we'll trip over the water trough because I'm clumsy and do that we'll grab a hay bale So yeah, I got four silage bales here just because we're using the thing at the top. Okay, that's not where I want to be. Food. Um, so this is Bramblewood Field that we're doing right now. Um, yeah. Elm Flower is the other one. Which is low on silage. This one we just did looks fine. That's 
full of cider. That's 4,000 litres. So I can now use a full bale on this one, so long as it's about 25%. Uh, they got water. Bramblewood should have water. Elm flower is that field over there. So we will uh, fill that up with water and then um, head on round. I think what? Um, actually, no, we won't. I'm supposed to drop another uh, another crate of sugar beets in that field, so we don't have to bring back more s so soon. Okay, so that's the full tank. That's the partial. Run back to here. Jump back in the Land Rover. Stick the the, the things over it. And this is all for the bottom field, or well, the other field at the bottom. What are we saying? Oh, I see what you're getting at. Um, now, what I use, I used to use a small Brantner trailer to feed the pigs on Goldcrest. Uh, right there. And I think someone gave us the mod for the uh, Brantner trailer in FS19. No, wrong. Back. Let's say I didn't reload it. That's always a possibility. don't have the little Brantner trailer. It's a little 8,000 litre Brantner trailer. It had the only options it had for customization in 17 was the colour. But you could hitch them nose to tail. So just hitch multiples all together. And I used to have four of them and I'd just fill them up with each of the food sources for pigs and then just do that. Okay, no worries. Um, I'm probably going to be ending this soon. We've still got a wet crop in the field. Uh, so that should give me about four of those. Yes. We'll grab that there and jump. Get stuck on the fence. Okay. Throw that over there, and then still be stuck on the fence. Yay! Okay. Oh, well, I guess they needed all of that one. That's a shame. And again, we'll just have a problem walking here. There we go. So that's now partially filled. But they don't eat much of it. You know, it's, it's a partial crate every time. And we'll grab the other one and then we'll drive back to the yard. Oh, yeah, um, I have noticed it has been um, twirling around a bit, the little circle, every so often. So it could be my connection, it could just be Twitch is being annoying. But uh, that's the food done. Um, Drive this back to the the yard, I guess. Excuse me. 
pulling out. Mummy! That's not going to work. That could do with a clean as well. Anyway, uh, I'm going to park that there, go look for the JCB. See if we can uh, finish off feeding the digestate to the thing. Oh, that's looking really good. We have four stacks left. Oh. I don't think the, uh, the digester is empty enough to uh, take all of these yet. Not a problem. Um, I mean, you've got to remember, I, I'm not a farmer, so as far as uh, doing this stuff realistically is concerned, I'm probably not. But I'm a computer programmer, so I understand the... Um, I don't... I, I understand how game mechanics work. Um, I have a friend who's... Um, he, he, back when X-Wing very first came out, so we're talking early 90s, DOS version, um, he won that game by basically figuring out which TIE Fighter was programmed to destroy which, um, friendly ship or shuttle. Um, and the whole point was, was you had to have... You know, if you had to have five shuttles survive, and there were five shuttles at the beginning of the mission, you had to make sure all of them survived. All you had to do was write down which five TIE Fighters destroyed each of the shuttles, and in what sequence. And so, first shuttle is destroyed by TIE Fighter 5. You just concentrate on destroying TIE Fighter 5 and kill that one first. Once that one's dead, you look at what TIE Fighter's targeting Shuttle 2, and then kill that one. That's your priority target. Once all the all the TIE Fighters that are programmed to destroy your mission objectives are dead, you can concentrate on all of the rest of them. And so it took him a couple of attempts <coughs> per mission to actually succeed, but it really boiled down to figuring out Yo, which one does what? That's my prime target. And as, as soon as I've killed everything that, that is designed to make the, the mission fail, all I now have to do is survive, you know, be, good, be good enough to survive, and I can kill the rest of them in any order I want to. Um, and pretty much all computer games are based like that. Now there, there's a little bit more AI. It's not so much a th this... Um, this target will end your mission if you don't destroy it first. It, it's now any target can destroy anything. But still there are programming parameters and all you have to do is figure out what they are in order to maximize your effectiveness in the game. It's just that a lot of games these days are so complicated that um, you know, it, it's it's like being a chess grandmaster. You know. The only way to do it is to know every single move and every single permutation and uh, try and figure out how to stop each and every one of them. But uh, Anyway, so this will be all of the silage done when I uh, speed up the time a bit and get those bales disappeared. And then I think we are going to leave the harvester in the field ready to go tomorrow and hopefully the crop will dry out. It's one down. Speed up to time 60. Um, not so much interested in that screen. This one. This funny crop destruction means we've got purple harvested and then bits what we drove over that aren't considered as harvested anymore. Okay, so 
I'm saying that looks like we got over half of that field done. Uh, probably three fifths as an estimate. Um, but I want to be on that screen there. Clover side. Oh, I didn't put any clover silage in that bottom field. Should have done that. Uh, okay, they're all gone. I can slow down time again. And what the heck? We can uh, drive back to the farm. Because I think all of, our, all of our silage is gone. Yay! So, big income tonight from the silage. That's going to be good. Not sure you're supposed to have a uh, main road vehicle with four wheel steering active because it does kind of make the tractor a little bit unstable doing this. And it does drive a lot better two wheel steering at speed. There's a whole bunch of interesting laws concerning agricultural equipment in many different countries and they're all different so uh, this tractor is actually designed as a main road vehicle so I think it bypasses some of the tractor specific laws um, yeah I can drive this at 40 miles an hour on a road but I think I have to turn the two wheel steering off if I have a 40 mile an hour gearbox in a Challenger yeah that's nice to have but you're not allowed to drive a tractor faster than something like 20 miles an hour on a public highway. Uh, at least the JCB's back at the yard. Until the next time. Oh, and I have to reverse that little trailer when we get back to the yard, because it needs to go in the, uh, the shed. Okay, pull over there, we'll jump out and run around there before the car kills us. So one of these is going to get eaten anyway. There we go. And I've got three left. So how are our sheep actually doing? Um, that's good, we've got water. Bramblewood Field, which is the one on the opposite side, there might be enough capacity there for a 4,000 litre bale but I can guarantee it so I'm going to avoid that for now this one definitely not capacity so so as I was saying all these sheep are tiny 113 pounds these sheep are all 151 pounds they eat a ton more food that says 390 I don't, I don't trust this number that says they eat 395 litres a year, 281, 282. I think that's based on relative health. Um, health. And uh, a number, not weight, of sheep. Because that's part of... I, I think the food requirement calculation is based on base game math. But the actual food consumption is based on um, seasons math and seasons math doesn't display on the base game panels a, a lot of the time so the sheep in the top field eat half what the other sheep feed because they weigh half the weight but there's 300 of them rather than 250 so they kind of eat more Ah, and that could be. I mean, from what I've read from British road law, um, it's basically you can or you can't do this with a tractor. Not necessarily considering you can or can't do this with a tractor, but if you put racing tyres on it, you can drive down the road at 70 miles an hour in it. Um, if the gearbox allowed for that type of thing. So, like I said, I'm not sure in t exactly the reason for it. The reason might be tractor tyres. But, um, there we go. That's all done. Um, let's stick it in forward and 
turn the engine off. Turn the engine off. That button there. And back to the Land Rover. And we can bring this back to the yard. The trailer could do with a clean. Um, but now that this trailer is empty, I can now use it to do a bulk resupply of anything. Um, I think when we did the the silage bale <coughs> um, deliveries, I should not have gone this way. Um, I big giant tractor. Yeah, when I did the silage bale deliveries, I did that in the telehandler and just picked up a bunch every time. So a little bit more journey time, but a little less hassle. Oh, oh no, I did hit it. And you can't do anything with these tyres. If I throw this tyre away, it will be stacked back here after the next game load. Anyway. Um. Oh. So yeah, I have to reverse this trailer into here. Beep beep dog. Be nice to see some something like this in Farm Sim 22 as well. I know we've got the in-game trailer, which is nice enough, but these have no sides, so much easier to load pallets on. They don't look stupid with the sides hanging down because you've loaded up too much on the back. And this one comes in about three or four styles, depending on. Um, how much? Where are they under? Miscellaneous? So yeah, we have that one in game. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but then... Bailing tech? Nope. Okay. Let's go with... Those are... What's the name of the guy? Um, oh, I suppose I could. Ivor Williams. That's the one. Is that I or W? U V W. Ivor. Um, L K L I J. Saria, Ivor Williams, in the middle of the J. So oh, no, because it's another thing I'm trying to get used to. Is Farm Sim 19 is vertical. I've only got the one loaded, but there are two axle and single axle ones, so uh, quite a nice range of small truck, you know, <coughs> pickup truck hauled trailers that do come in very handy. Okay. Um, we'll reverse this into the shed this time. And did I turn the engine off? No. Yes. So I guess right now, crop still wet. What was the weather going to be tomorrow morning? Uh, it's dry all night. Oh, it's going to rain tomorrow afternoon, so we should, the crop should be dry by tomorrow morning, so we should get a little bit of a time to uh, harvest the rest of the spelt, uh, possibly the canola, bring all that back to the farm, and then we see what's what, but for right now, it's nap time. And usually that's around 9 o'clock, that's around 8 o'clock. I'm going to go to around 7 o'clock, I think. 
So 123,000 income from the biogas plant. Oh, that's nice. So 739, that was a good guess. The crop is still wet. No, it's not. So we can start up. Oh, what will it be? Probably Friday now. And oh yes, yeah. The bean, the honey spawn point is really quite fancy because you can put multiple beehives down and then just spawn it at one convenient to you point. So yes, come Friday, we will be back on Friday, barring any other issues in the meantime, uh, family, real life, medical, whatever. And we will continue with this spelt harvest. How much spelt do we have? That would be interesting to know so far. Um, we have unloaded 160,000 litres. Potentially we've got the same again. I think we've got more. Um, I think that field up north of us. This field... Yeah, that's 160. This will be probably another. Um, 100,000, 120,000, possibly here. And then we've easily got another 160, 180,000, maybe 200 up here. So that's a lot of spelt we're going to have to move. Uh, canola's down here. We're not going to have a lot of that, but it is going to be handy. There's a great demand for something. Maybe I should check on that. Uh, great demands are here. Oh, um, hmm. 641. I'm guessing that's not ideal. Just, just a thought. Triticale. But it's something I should pay attention to. Yeah, see, 600... What did he say? 681. So we do get a peak here, but yeah, potential sale is somewhere close to 700 pounds per lit thousand litres. So I'm not sure I really want to take advantage of 641. I can do better, but that's, that's not a bad thought because um, obviously I can take a ton of it there and it won't reduce the price. Um, but anyway, yes, so this has been Monday after thing. It is midday. I should go and eat and drink stuff. Um, but everybody, have a good week, and we will be back in time for some of the new year. But for right now, I'm out of here. <laughs>